welcome to Hero Pack Focus Champions. I'm JP from Northern Lights over Arkham and this time I will be overviewing the Black Widow Hero Pack. I will be going over the new player cards that come in this Hero Pack, so stick around to find out if you should get this hero into your collection. Let's get started. If you like my content, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss anything. Black Widow is the fourth hero pack to come out for Marvel Champions the card game. Let's look at the signature cards Black Widow has first. Black Widow's alter ego is Natasha Romanoff. She has a recovery of three, has the shield and spy traits. As a response, after you play a preparation card, you may draw one card. And it's limited to one spare round. On the flip side, the hero side is Black Widow. Black Widow has two thwart, two attack and a defense of two, and the Avengers and Spy trait. Her ability is the Widowmaker. Response after you trigger the ability of a preparation card you control, deal one damage to an enemy. She has two Dance of Death cards. Dance of Death is a three cost event. It's an attack and hero action. Make the following three attacks in order. Deal one damage to an enemy. Deal two damage to an enemy. Deal three damage to an enemy. And Dance of Death has the energy resource symbol. Then there's Attack Robotics. It's a one cost upgrade. It has the attack, preparation and skill traits. It's a hero interrupt attack. When a boost card is turned face up, discard acrobatics, cancel the boost icons on that card. Deal one damage to the villain for each boost icon cancelled this way. Acrobatics also has the strength resource type. Next up is grappling hook. It's a two cost upgrade. It has the preparation and tech traits. Hero interrupt. When you reveal a treachery, discard Grappling Hook, cancel the effects of that treachery and discard it. Grappling Hook has the mental resource type. Next up is Widow's Bite. It's a one cost upgrade. It has the preparation and tech traits. Hero response, attack. After a minion enters play, discard Widow's Bite. Deal two damage to that minion and stun it. Widow Spite has the energy resource type. Then we have the signature ally of Black Widow, Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier is a four cost ally. He has two thwart and two attack. He has the Avenger and Spy traits and four hit points. Reduce the cost to play Winter Soldier by one for each preparation card you control and Winter Soldier has the wild resource type. Next up is Cover-Ups. Cover-Ups is a three cost event. It has the Thwart trait. Action, Thwart. Remove four threat from machine. Confuse the villain. Cover-Ups has the mental resource type. Then we have Safe House number 29. It's a one cost support. It has the location and shield traits. Alter Ego action. Exhaust safe house number 29 and choose a preparation card in your discard pile. Add that card to your hand. And safe house number 29 has the strength resource type. Then there's the Black Widow's Gauntlet. It's a one cost upgrade. It has the tech trait. Resource Exhaust Black Widow's Gauntlet. Generate a wild resource for a preparation card. Black Widow's Gauntlet has the Strength Resource type. And last we have the Synth Suit. It's a 3 cost upgrade. It has the Armor and Tech traits. Black Widow gets plus 1 defense. Hero Responds. After you trigger the ability of a preparation card you control, Exhaust Synth Suit. Ready Black Widow. The Synth Suit has the Energy Resource type. Black Widow's nemesis is the Taskmaster. Taskmaster is Team Zero and Attack Zero. Taskmaster has the Hydra and Elite traits. 
and 4 hit points. Taskmaster gets plus 1 shield and plus 1 attack for each upgrade you control. Taskmaster has the boost action. For this activation, the villain gets plus 1 shield and plus 1 attack for each preparation card you control. The nemesis shield is killer for hire. Uh, when revealed, place an additional 1 threat here per player and it adds an acceleration token and it comes into play with 3 threats. Then we have Deadly Shot. When revealed, Alter Ego, discard an upgrade you control and place one threat onto the main machine. When revealed, Hero, discard an upgrade you control and take one damage. There are also two Hydra Mercenaries in the Nemesis set. Black Widow's obligation is Burn Notice. Give to the Natasha Romanov player. You may flip to Alter Ego form. Choose Exhaust Natasha Romanov, remove this card from the game, or discard the preparation card you control with the highest cost. If you cannot, this card can search, discard this obligation. As you can see, Black Widow's signature cards and the Nemesis cards revolve around the preparation mechanic. I will look at the synergies with the preparation cards later in this video, but let's check out the rest of the new cards that come in this hero pack. The pre-built deck in Black Widow is Justice, so there are more new Justice cards than other aspect cards. First we have Agent Coulson. He is a 3 cost Justice ally. He has 2 thwart and 1 attack. He has the shield and spy traits and 3 hit points. Response after Agent Coulson enters play, search your deck and discard pile for a preparation card and add it to your hand. Shuffle your deck. And Agent Coulson has the mental resource type. Then there's Quake. Quake is a true cost justice ally. She has 1 toward and 2 attack. She has the Avenger and Shield traits and 2 hit points. Response After a minion shims, exhaust Quake and deal 2 damage to that minion. Quake has the energy resource type. Then there's 3 copies of Stealth Strike. Stealth Strike is a 3 cost event. It has the attack trait, hero action attack, deal 4 damage to an enemy. If that enemy is defeated by this attack, remove two threats from a shield. Stealth Strike has the mental resource type. Then we have Counterintelligence. Counterintelligence is a justice upgrade. Costs two resources. It has the preparation and skill traits. There's a limit of maximum of one per player. Interrupt. When any amount of threat would be placed on the main scheme, discard counterintelligence. Prevent three of that threat. Counterintelligence has the energy resource type. Then we have Spycraft. Spycraft is a one cost upgrade. It has the preparation and skill traits. They only if you control a spy character. Interrupt. When you reveal an encounter card, Discard Spycraft, cancel the effects of that card and discard it. Then reveal another card from the encounter deck. Spycraft has the strength resource type. The Justice cards revolve a lot around controlling the villain. Stealth Strike deals damage and also if you defeat an enemy with it, you can remove threat. Counterintelligence is also a good card to keep the sudden burst of threat onto the main chain in check. For example, if the villain draws an advance and makes a surprise sheem, you can cancel three threat from that sheeming and maybe stop the villain from scheming you out. Spycraft is a bit of a dividing card amongst players. Some regard it as a really strong card and some don't care about it that much. For me, I found 
spycraft to be quite useful in many situations. For example, if you draw a card from the encounter deck that could cause you to lose the game, you can trigger spycraft and just discard it. Many cards that cancel the revelation effects from encounter cards are only for treachery cards. Spycraft can affect any card pulled from the encounter deck. The argument I've heard about why Spycraft is maybe not that good is that you have to draw another card. But for me, it just means you have to be prepared to deal with that other card in some other way. Of course, Spycraft could fail and you pull just another bad card you can't deal with. But at least there's a chance to ignore any card you pull and maybe get a, an easier encounter card instead. From the allies, Agent Colson is straight up comboing with the preparation mechanic. He has a good sword also, so that's good, but usually not that useful because the whole justice deck is based on dealing with the threat level. But the big thing is you can fish out that one preparation you really need at that moment with Agent Colson. Quake is a cheap ally to play. I have first thought that Quake wasn't that interesting or good of an ally, but the more I've played with Quake, I've found that uh, a two-cost ally in Justice is really good because the allies tend to cost three or more. So a two-cost ally is a really nice thing to have. Plus, Quake has two attack, so it brings a bit more punch to the Justice deck. Quake also has the responsibility to help you deal damage to minions when you're in Alter Ego mode. If the minions are seeming, you can deal two damage to a minion, even if your hero is in Alter Ego. Let's next look at the aggression preparation card that comes in Black Widow. Counter-attack is a one-cost aggression upgrade. It has the preparation and tactic traits. It has the limit of maximum of one per player. Hero response attack. After you take damage from an enemy attack, discard counter-attack. Deal an equal amount of damage to that enemy. Counter-attack is really interesting uh, because aggression isn't keen on ignoring damage rather than dealing a lot of damage out. For example, you take a 7 damage hit from a Rhino charge attack. You can then, if you survive, use the counter-attack and deal equal amount of damage back to uh, Rhino. It can be really strong, but many times I've found that the damage I deal back is not that significant. It's only like two or three points of damage. The limit of maximum of one per player is also a bit annoying. You really want three of these in the deck, so you always have one in play, but then they only turn into strength resources if you have one in play. I'm not that impressed with this preparation card as a whole. But let's look at next at the leadership preparation card. Rapid response is a two cost upgrade. It has the preparation and tactic traits. There's also the limit of maximum of one per player. Hero response. After an ally you control is defeated. Discard Rapid Response. Put that ally into play from your discard pile and deal one damage to it. Rapid Response has the mental resource type. Rapid Response has been really good in the decks I've used it in. For example, a common ally in leadership is Hawkeye. When you run out of arrows on Hawkeye, you can just use Hawkeye and attack or thwart 
to deal the third consequential damage on Hawkeye that defeats him. If you have rapid response in play, then you can just put Hawkeye back onto the table and Hawkeye has mysteriously regained all of his arrows. You also put one damage on Hawkeye, but that trade-off to get Hawkeye back without paying for him is really strong. Rapid response, I think, works really well in any leadership deck. You don't have to play Black Widow to get really strong use of rapid response. I recently played rapid response in a Thor deck, and I'll put a link to that video up to the upper right corner if you want to check that playthrough out. It's a bit of a long, long playthrough, but I use rapid response throughout the game a few times with great effect. Next, let's look at the protection preparation card. Defensive stance is a two cost upgrade. It has the preparation and tactic traits. There's a maximum of one per player restriction. Hero interrupt. When you would take any amount of damage, discard defensive stance, prevent three of that damage. Defensive stance has the energy resource type. I've tried out defensive stance in a few protection decks. I found it to be quite useful if you, for example, get surprised by a second villain attack by, for example, an assault. You could be really low on health, so if you have defensive stance in play, you can just ignore three of that damage that's coming to you and maybe save the game with that. I think defensive stance is quite decent, but there are a lot of different protection cards that do the same effect, but the advance that defensive stance has, it's played onto the table and it doesn't clog up your hand like many of the pr uh, protection events that prevent damage. So it's ready to be used whenever you need it. Lastly, let's look at the basic cards that come in Black Widow's hero pack. Wind Carrier is a three cost support. It has the Avenger and Vehicle traits. Play only if your identity has the Avenger trait. Resource. Exhaust Queen Carrier, generate a wild resource. And Queen Carrier has the mental resource type. Queen Carrier works quite the same way as Hell Carrier. It has the restriction that you have to be have to have the adventure trait to play it. But at the moment, every hero that has been released has the adventure trait on the hero side. Queen Carrier offers you another free resource to be used by the side of Helicarrier. I think this is a good card, but it's not an auto-include. If your deck doesn't need Helicarrier, it might not need Queen Carrier either. Next up is Target Acquired. It's a one-cost upgrade. It has the preparation and skill traits. There's the limit of max one per player. Hero response. After a boost card is turned face up, discard target acquired. Cancel that card's boost ability. Target acquired has the strength resource type. At first, I wasn't that excited with target acquired. It's maybe not the strongest preparation card there is, or amongst those strong cards. And where this card really shines is those villains and modular sets that have a lot of boost abilities. For example, Masters of Evil has a lot of different boost abilities, so you can pretty often fire off target acquired and cancel those. I usually like to have one or two of these if in the deck if I have the space, depending of course on what villain I'm playing against. The last player card is Espionage. It's a one cost upgrade. It has the preparation and skill traits. 
play only if you control a spy character. Interrupt. When the search keyword on an encounter card would be resolved, discard espionage, draw two cards. Espionage is an interesting preparation card. It doesn't affect the villain in any way. The search happens regardless if you trigger espionage or not. It gives you an advantage in your hand size. You can have three of the espionages in play and trigger all of them at the same time if the villain pulls a search card effect. And that could result in a really big turn on the next round. I personally like espionage a lot and try to include it in all of my Black Widow builds. Finally, let's look a bit more about the preparation mechanic and how the Black Widow cards work in unison with it. Natasha Romanov's ability Mission Prep triggers whenever you have played a preparation card. You immediately draw one card and there's a limit once per phase. So, because Black Widow's signature cards include a lot of preparation cards in itself, you don't even have to add many aspect or basic preparation cards to trigger this often. I usually get to trigger mission prep every time I'm in Alter Ego when I'm playing Black Widow. Black Widow's Widowmaker response is the hidden damage dealing engine that is lacking from her signature events and other cards. You can trigger Widowmaker multiple times a turn. For example, if you trigger three preparation cards, you can fire off Widowmaker three times. Widowmaker is really efficient at removing, for example, tough status cards or finishing off minions that are in low health. In one game, I think I counted that I triggered Widowmaker maybe 14 times throughout the game. Black Widow's gauntlets are really important to get into play fast. They generate wild resources for your preparation cards. So the faster you get Black Widow's gauntlets into play, the cheaper your preparations come into play. A noteworthy addition is to mention that you can use the gauntlets either in Alter Ego or Hero Form. So they are always available. And there's two in the deck, so you can play multiple one-cost preparations or use both of them to play one two-cost preparation. The Sun Suit is one of my favorite cards from the Black Widow. It adds one defense to Black Widow and also the hero response after you trigger an ability on a preparation card you control. Exhaust Sin Suit, ready Black Widow. This card is really strong if you're playing as solo, as you will have to defend now and then. And especially if you're playing Protection Black Widow, when you can pile up the defense by adding the armored vest, so Black Widow's defense goes up to four, and she takes really little damage. The ability to ready your hero is also really strong, because when you're defending, you usually can't do the basic action of either attacking or thwarting the next turn, or flip to Alter Ego and heal. So if you can fire up even one preparation and exhaust Sin Suit, you can ready Black Widow and she's ready to go in the next hero phase. The last card I will be looking at is the safe house number 29. It basically turns into a free resource whenever you're in Alter Ego. There should be always some preparation cards in your discard. So whenever you're in Alter Ego, you can exhaust safe house number 29 
and pick one of those preparation cards from your discard pile and add it to your hand. You can even play a card, paying it with a preparation card, then exhaust safe house and take it back into your hand. I usually play safe house by using a preparation card to play it and then just pick it up again. I hope this overview helped you decide if Black Widow's playstyle suits you and if you should get this hero pack. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the Black Widow hero pack as in general. Thanks for watching and until next time.